Hi everyone, this is Daz here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be going through the most common software which I use as a structural engineer. Enjoy. The most used program I think for me is a form of PDF writer. Bluebeam is the best and is what I currently use but PDF Exchange is a great and free alternative, which is what I use on my personal computer. It's inexpensive to upgrade to a pro account with some useful features for around 40 to 50 pounds. I've tried Foxit PDF Reader and it is not very user-friendly in my opinion compared to Bluebeam. Bluebeam is great if you're on Windows, which most engineering companies are, and it really is the gold standard. It is actually a very fairly priced piece of software at only around 300 pounds for a standalone license, it is fantastic value and I would urge you to try it. There is a 30 day free trial for anyone that wants to try before they buy. Bluebeam is really intuitive. It has keyboard shortcuts to most functions so that makes your workflow even more efficient. Individuals on a tighter budget can try PDF Exchange. It offers some decent features for the free version but it's definitely worth upgrading for a pro version for around £40. Regardless of which program you use, the main features you need are the ability to annotate PDFs using lines and text. Um, another good feature to have is combining and organising PDFs. Microsoft Excel is very powerful and I use it almost daily for calculations. Back when I was a graduate I would create spreadsheets rather than relying on other people's, mainly because it can be difficult using other people's spreadsheets and if you create your own you are in control of what calculations are made. It also makes for good learning. Spreadsheets that I make are generally just a spreadsheet version of any form of repetitive calculations that I've done by hand. If I know that my hand calculations are correct, then simply copying them across into a spreadsheet format is pretty straightforward. The two I use the most are my concrete slab beam design and my simple steel beam design. Over the years since I've created them, I have added and tweaked to my own needs. The original concrete design spreadsheet could only design for flexure and shear, but then I started adding in other functions such as span to depth and crack widths. On a separate spreadsheet, I added a detailed deflection calculation, which was a calculation that I had done by hand. I knew it was something that could come up again, so that is why I made a spreadsheet version. The simple steel beam design originally just had simply supported UDL, but eventually I added point loads and other load conditions that I commonly use. You might ask why not just use TES, which is what I'll get onto later, but sometimes you just can't get a license for it, and sometimes using a spreadsheet is just quicker. I have my two spreadsheets pinned to my taskbar, so I can simply right click and open, punch in a few numbers and I've got a design done. Another design software which I use frequently is TEDS made by Tekla, and it's a piece of software which I've used in basically all the companies I've ever worked for. It has a really good library of calculations to use. You should always be careful when using design software and if you are unfamiliar with that piece of software, it is a good practice to go through the output and check the calculations. A common problem I have with TEDS is its masonry design. Very often it will fail masonry panels and I don't often use it or I have to do some other hand calculations to justify the design, which just adds time. So another common piece of software which you will need to be using as an engineer is analysis software. And this could be in any form such as robot, um, Tecla Structural Designer, SEA, GSA, or something like Master Series. At most companies, you will be using at least one form of analysis software, and these would generally be a sort of finite element type software. I have commonly used Robot and Tecla Structural Designer, but other companies will have their preferences on what they use. All analysis software will have their pros and cons, but ultimately they do the same thing. Again, like with design software, it is good practice to verify analysis output by using hand calculations. Never trust output unless you understand what is going on. Before using it for complicated structures, try making simple models that you can easily verify by hand calculations. Next we have drawing software. So the common standard nowadays is to use Revit and to some degree AutoCAD. I use Revit Viewer to spin models around but Revit and AutoCAD is generally used by engineering technicians who use these to produce the model and then the drawings. Engineers don't tend to be the ones who produce drawings and it is deemed not time efficient as engineers are doing a host of other things. So we do not have the time to produce drawings as well. Revit is the standard nowadays, however, with the ever-increased reliance on computer software, 
the skills of drawing is now significantly diminished. I was having a chat about this subject in the office last week. The skill to be able to put pen to paper is lost with new technicians. Before, when drawing, you draw what you see or want to show. However, in Revit, it is so easy to produce a section from a model that people do not spend the time to make the drawing look like a real section. The section just becomes messy and they cannot determine what they want to show. Just because you can show everything doesn't mean you should. Whilst I understand the importance of Revit, the basic skills of drawing should not be forgotten. You probably guessed it, and that program is Microsoft Word. I only use this for report writing, pretty standard stuff, nothing flashy. Reports can include you know, writing your calculation packs or building appraisals for when you've completed a structural survey. Personally, I don't like Word. I find it horribly clunky, but I guess it does the job. I found keeping notes digitally far more effective than using a physical notebook. Don't get me wrong, I still carry a small notebook with me in my bag, but I use it less and less. As more people use tablets or laptops, it is becoming easier to digitise your notes and carry them around with you just like a physical notebook. As most companies use Windows machines, OneNote is clearly a sensible option for note-taking digitally. My criteria for choosing a note-taking app was that it needed to be compatible for Windows, Mac and iOS. I used OneNote as my main note-taking app for about two years, but I have recently switched to Notion. The search and note management is far superior to OneNote, which is the main reason I switched. I understand that Notion can be a fairly complex and powerful application, however it is also fantastic even for simpler tasks and it is really easy to get a hang of. What's great is that the app is completely free for a single user and works cross-platform. I'll do a more dedicated video later on how I use Notion within my workflow. So those are the most common pieces of software which I use as a structural engineer in my sort of daily workflow. Remember that software is just a tool or an aid to help you get things done a little bit quicker or just a little bit more efficiently. Everything can be done with a pen and paper, so don't forget these basic skills, whether it's sort of calculation, sketching, drawing, or even note taking. I hope you found this video interesting. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.